Hi, my name is Bilo, and I've been serving in the church for as long as I can remember. On many days, I joined a worship team to lead God's people to a place of worship, and on other days, I serve as help to the church's media because of my day-to-day -day job outside of the church. Now, having software that helps the media project relevant information to the church's congregation is essential. I'm thankful for Easy Worship. They have already proved that. But you see, Easy Worship has been around for about 17 years, and even though the software has tremendously improved, right, there are a few things that seem so difficult to access, especially because not every church wants, you know, to be a power user with a lot of features that they will never ever use, right? So with that in mind, I bid a tool that, help, that can help your church to level up its projection, right? So most of its users have also told me that it's easy to use, uh, but you be the judge and it's called Cloud of Worshippers. It's free to try out. I have used my years spent in the church to optimize the experience on this software to ensure that it's not just easy for the media, but it's also easy on the eyes for the congregation and it's also functional. All right, so let's move on to setting up your screens. Now, Cloud of Worshippers can run on any platform, even an iPad or an Android tablet. And this is possible because it runs on the web. So it, it's also possible to project it to any screen as long as the device you are projecting from has a video output medium of any kind, uh, whether it is HDMI, USB-C, display ports, or even a VGA. I'll be using a Windows PC to demo screen setup as it is the most used device in churches today. First, you would need to extend the screen so that the first screen is an extension of the other rather than the, them being duplicated. Now, if you are using your computer for church media, uh, chances are you have already done this in the past, so you might just keep up, keep this step. As uh, secondly, you will need to move the live tab of Cloud Worshippers, so there is a go live button. After you click that, you can move it to the secondary tab and then make it full screen. So there is no obstruction and it is the only focus. Please note that many of this will be automatic in the future, uh, as Cloud Worshippers is still undergoing active development and feature requests. Oh, Alright, one of the biggest motivations of building cloud of worshippers was ease of use. And that is why we try to make the layout as clear and as simple as possible. We have three major themes the quick action beam, the preview and release content beam, and then the live output beam. Quick action here, preview and it's in the middle, live action at the other end. All right, and quick actions is the place you need to search for any action that can be done as part of worshippers. You can find this in a menu and search for it the way you think about it, that will present something for you. Uh, preview and edit content shows all creates like preview, all slides that have been created. Uh, it shows a preview of all slides that have been created. And then the lower part has a pane where you can edit all of the slide content. So this could be like maybe changing text content, moving to the next Bible verse, moving to the next hymn verse, moving to the next song verse, right? Or just upgrading the, upgrading the background image, right? Or changing it to a video or something. So this is fully customizable on the edit content scheme. And then that would be it for setting up cloud uh, of Washington and software layout. Now, the opening of the Bible passage, uh, it's as easy as also going to the read options. Just search. Any Bible passage, right? You think I've changed them, and you don't even need to spell it fully. You just add the quotation without spaces between the columns and number, just like one showing up on your screen right now. And you can also jump to first quickly by using the content screen. And also move to the next of the previous verse with the arrows. We are just supposed to preview scripture before clicking on them, as we realize that this is something some churches actually need. I would be out before you need to stick it. All right. Now, displaying a hymn. Displaying a hymn is also as easy, maybe even more easier than displaying a Bible passage. So you just go back to the action style and just search for the hymn. So if you want, maybe Blessed Assurance, but Blessed Assurance, uh, with a collection of over a thousand hymns, we can assure you that every hymn it just sings is maybe already in our library. Uh, you can access, and you can access all of it offline just after a single load of the web app. Uh, just search for it in the captions, that is all. You can also use the content being to move to the next verse, previous verse, or with a specific verse of the hymn. Also move to the chorus as well. 
all right and after that you can display a song's lyrics so a big bottleneck in churches uh today or in the current system is that there's difficult things that acquiring lyrics of gospel songs many churches have to copy and paste from google or the internet and depending on how spontaneous the worship leader or song minister is it can get really tedious sometimes it people appeals impossible all right so this is why we have a collection of some popular worship songs and a few of popular worship songs that we think you might need for sermons. And this feature promises to get a lot better. What do you need to try it out at all? Uh, just search or display the mix in the quick action style, and then you would click. As soon as you click on it, you will see a bunch of lyrics. What you have, you probably already have a song in mind, just forget and search for it. My song is What a Beautiful Name. And then you can see that there are a couple of search results so i go ahead and click on the one that's i need as soon as i click on it voila. and that's it's your lyrics at the same and you can move from one verse to another easily just like you would do for a bible passage all right now let's move to creating cell and slides as you might have noticed cloud of worshippers uh, is generally made up of actions and slides but let's focus on slides for now Slides are divided into four types. You have the Bible slide, you have the hymn slide, you have the song slide, and then you have the deck slide. All of them can be created with different actions in the big action style. For this section, we are only concerned about the deck slide because that's what we would typically use for sermons. So you can create a text slide by clicking on the great slide option. Great slide option or the great slide action is definitely a quick action style. Right, so the text slide has a lot of formatting options for you to make your verses, bullet points, and many more. Right, you have header options, a couple of them actually. So you can go ahead and use what you see fit for the sermon. You can also change the background of the slides to a video, to an image, to a solid color. Right, uh, you can also improve legibility by reducing. We added some editing options. You can reduce the brightness of the background. Or blow out the background just to add some you know nice uh touch and aesthetics so it looks a lot more beautiful than you would have imagined imagined all right and then the feature is with added supports although we have added support actually to duplicate and delete a slide so this is one of the end features requested by a user and the priority is development so you can also try this out uh, you can duplicate a slide by clicking on the copy icon over the slide card and delete the slide by clicking on the trash icon as well. Duplicating a slide is especially important if you want to create another seven slide immediately without worrying too much about layout. So you just go ahead, copy, paste, and then you don't need to paste actually, just copy the slide. And then if you want to change out the contents, go ahead and change it to suit uh, what the preacher or what is in focus in the sermon or in service at the moment. And then in conclusion, you know, it's still very early days for us of how the worshippers actually, and I'm happy to see how you explore this in your church. Uh, the primary features that you need in your church will always be free to use. Yes, now and forever. The primary features will always be free. Uh, but feel free to contact me personally on hello at peoplefelix.com uh, if you wish to try out cloud of worshippers in your church. We are sharing this software on your request basis. Just to ensure that we are not exceeding our computing resources because we are offering it out for free. So we don't want to get to a scenario where one person that requested for it can no longer use it because he doesn't have, we don't have enough computing resources to service the person that initially, initially asked for it. And if you have any more questions, also just feel free to reach me on my personal email that I had already shipped. Thank you very much. I hope that God bless you here. I hope you find value in this. All right. Have a lovely day. Bye.